Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start off by taking a page out of Ola England's book and do a little new section at the beginning here. If you don't know who Ola England is, he's a fantastic guitarist with a fantastic YouTube channel, go check him out. Anyway, to the news. Firstly, it was my birthday a couple of days ago, so happy birthday to me. Uh, secondly, Dream Theatre dropped a new album on the day after my birthday, so well, hey. Uh, and on my birthday, the new Dune film has been released, which is what my t-shirt is all about. So I love that film, I love that book, um, and yeah, so it's been a good week in terms of releases and events for me. Anyway, that was the news. Let's get into what we're talking about today. We're doing another Helix tone today, and one of my favourite amps that I kind of made a while ago, a couple of years ago, near the beginning of when I got the Helix, was their model of the PRS Archon, uh, known as the Archtype Clean and Archtype Lead, uh, as two models on the Helix to represent the two channels of the PRS Archon. I'd never heard of this amp before I uh, tried it on the Helix, and I just liked the sound of it. So yes, this will be on the Custom Tone website. If you want to download it, the link will be down below, which you can download for free. Uh, but if you do like that patch, or if you like any of my other patches, or if you just like what I'm doing on this channel in general, you can buy me a coffee. Uh, and the link for that will also be down below if you just want to throw, throw me a little tip, a little couple of quid my way, just as a show of appreciation. Oh, and also, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and share and all of that. Uh, let's leave it at that. Let's get into it now. So we start here in snapshot mode, but I'm going to go back to stomp box mode for a moment. So this is what it looks like. This is what, well, obviously this is what it looks like, but this is what it looks like when you're looking at all the different effects I've got here. So it's, let me point your attention to here. So I've actually got two amps here. I've got the archetype clean and the archetype lead. Currently the uh, clean, the clean channel is on, hold on. Uh, and the lead is not. And what I've done, so if you wanted to use this as like a pedal board, this one here, I'll have to rename multiple, but what this is, is a, an amp switcher, essentially. It's going to switch between the clean and the dirty channels. Uh, on the Helix, it's actually two different amp models. Uh, if, you had the, if you had the actual amp, you just switch between the two channels on the amp. But this is what this button here is meant to do. So if I, if I click on it, you can see that it's changed to that one being on, the archetype lead being on. You can even hear the noise. Here's my distorted channel. Go back to clean. Noise has gone away. And we're clean. So that's what this button does. And you can simply do that by assigning one of the amps to the, to whatever button you want, and then assigning the other uh, amp channel to the same thing, and you'll get this thing here saying multiple, and that there's two of them. I think you can have a third one if you if you really wanted to. If it was a three channel amp, I think you could do that. Although that will start to really encroach upon your DSP within the Helix. Um, if you need, if you want me to go into more detail on that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do a video on how to do that properly. Uh, apart from that, we've got the Tube Screamer, which I just really added for a bit of if for the option of doing that kind of really brutal metal type thing, which it kind of does, and maybe I'll show you that a, a bit later on. Um, but this amp does have a lot of gain, and I kind of didn't need any extra gain from the Tube Screamer, but I'm kind of not using the Tube Screamer for gain on this one. Gain, this is for the solo um, boost, which you'll see later on. It is, that's all it is, a solo boost. Double track, uh, we've talked about this quite a lot before. It is to give the effect that you've double tracked your, your guitar tone but you're doing it live as opposed to actually double tracking it. And I've used a delay method. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you might've seen the one where I talk about what's better, using delay to get the kind of double track effect or using Line 6's own double take effect block that they have. Bit of compression, chorus, phaser, and delay. So it's like having a pedal board. It's going back into snapshot mode. So in snapshot mode, I've done my usual thing of having four snapshots on the bottom and some effects along the top. So you've got to be aware of how you want to, where you put these effects, because if you're going to be using it in stompbox mode, you want to know 
what's what you're going to see when you're in sorry when you're in snapshot mode obviously these ones at the bottom here i'm not going to be able to see them when i'm in snapshot mode i usually have the double track thing here but i've had to change it a bit so i've got access to the delay anyway i've done enough talking let's listen to some tones here's my clean sound Here's my channel two, which will switch. So currently that's off or it's on clean channel. Go to this one. That light comes on in stomp box mode and it switched to the other channel. We can see it here where it changes and I go between the two. You'll also see that I've turned the reverb off. That one there's reverb off at the moment. It's on there for the clean. Just a bit of room reverb. Turned it off for channel two for the dirty channel. this song actually I think if I roll the volume down a bit I think it sounds a bit better this way In case you're wondering, let me turn off the double track. So that one automatically, channel two automatically has the double track on. Let's listen to it turned off. Uh, let me also mention that you'll see that there's two outputs here and I've assigned them to be left and right and that is for the sake of this double track thing. Um, I have done versions of where it kind of, where this, this is, so this delay here that's on is the double track one and I have done it uh, other patches where it goes back into the main line and that's, that's that top one there will just be a stereo out. But for some reason it didn't sound very wide. So this double track, this just kind of sounds wider, uh, but that's why there's two outputs there. And you also notice there's these two delays. If I turn the delay on, I've actually got a separate delay for each of those outputs. Uh, one of them is, in fact, let's go to it. One of them is quarter note delay. The other one is a dotted eighth. So you get this kind of sound. In fact, let me turn off the double track as well. So let's get back to it. So that was channel two. Here's my solo. In fact, let's go from channel two into solo. Let me also go back to a uh, stomp box mode. 
Let's check out this tube screen. Oh, there you, you can see the uh, gain has, has been turned on. That's the solo boost. In fact, let me show you the difference first. So it's just, um, what is that? 1.7 decibels boost. So it's not massive and you can adjust it depending on your use case. But let's check out this tube screen and let's see how, how it tightens up the low and then you get that kind of more brutal sound. In fact, let's go back to channel two. So here we go. So we checked out the solo. Solo bling is basically the same as a solo, but with delay and the uh, phaser. And it was just basically, I had a I had one going, I had a snapshot going free, so I thought I'd use it for that. Originally the solo was here, channel two was here, and I was gonna use that for another clean channel, uh, which, you know, you can still do that. But I decided to go for the, the bling side. So this is solo into solo bling. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may notice that my reverb here is before my delays and that is because that is because just the way that this is laid out I, I could put the, the, the delay afterwards but it would only be on, like, on one side I could put two delays but I think that might be eating up a bit too much DSP but it sounds fine there it's the delays not really sorry the uh, reverb's not really there for effect it's just there for a bit of ambience when i've got my clean sound so it's only on the clean sound as well if i happen to turn it off it's just a bit too dry on again so i turn these back on again i kind of I, I do like the delay here it's, it's it really fills up the space quite nicely I mean that already sounds nice but the delay really makes everything sound big bigger And the script mod phase, the phase 90 basically, I kind of got that on the solo bling. I'll just play it in here just for you to have a listen. Let's try it with some uh, on the solo channel. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So there you go. There is my preset on the Helix model of the PRS Archon amplifier. As you can tell, it's a very heavy sounding uh, amplifier. At least the the dirty side is. The clean side. The clean side is really nice. I really like the clean side. It's very bold and very beefy. I found compared to some of the other amps that I've done presets on. Uh, I did find that it, on. So the guitar that you've seen me use before, the, the Exotic XSC2. Actually, hold on a second, I'll go and get it. This guitar here, which I'm sure you've seen in my other videos before. It's one of my guitars that I use a lot on this channel and on gigs as well. But it's it's like a basically a vintage Strat type guitar. And it didn't sound as good. There was something not quite right when I plugged into the into this preset. So I'm not sure if it's just me, the way I've dialed it in, or if this guitar doesn't play well with it. So that's why I end up using the other one, my Chapman Cap 10, which is a bit more of a modern guitar, I guess you could say, with the humbuckers and obviously different pickups, but this sounded a bit, or a lot better, I guess, with this. So just be careful what guitar you use. You might have no problem with it. And if you use the real amp, it might not be a problem if you use like a vintage style guitar. So I just thought I'd mention that in case you have any of those issues as well. Obviously the guitar you use is gonna, is gonna make a difference in the way it sounds. So keep that in mind when you try this out, when you try this preset out. As I said, this preset is available to download on the Line 6 website on their custom 10 part. And again, the links are down below if you wanna check it out, if you want to download it yourself. You can also, if you do like that, and if you like anything I do in this channel or any of my other presets, you can also buy me a coffee. Link for that will be down below as well. And that kind of goes a long way to keeping this channel going and help, helping me get more stuff in. Anyway, let's leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, if you did, please uh, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and sharing. And, you know, we're getting close to a thousand subscribers now. Um, and yeah, let's go for that final push. G uh, getting a little bit closer with the 4,000 watch hours too. Uh, but hopefully we can get this the channel monetized soon. Um, if you are still watching this, you are a trooper and you are excellent. And it gives me warm feelings inside that you've stuck around for this long. So thank you very much. Please let me know you've got to the end of this video. Let's, I don't know, what should we say at the bottom of this video? I have a brush here. How about say something about the brush? I'll let you decide what you want to say about the brush. Keep it reasonably clean because um, it, uh, YouTube might not like it and may, they might remove your comment. So if you're still here and you want to show that you're still here at the end, say something about this brush. Anyway, I'll end on that note and I will see you in the next video. Take care.